Hello and welcome to another new video from BradleySedaraGraph.com. In this video, we're going to go over a historical correlation analysis. So this correlation analysis looked at the Bradley Sedera graph as well as the advanced astro indicator. It looked at the 2015 results to find out how high was the correlation between these indicators and 60 securities that we took a look at. So this right here is a listing of the weights for the S&P 500 for the advanced astro indicator. So you can see some planetary aspects such as Mercury and Neptune having a conjunction that typically has been associated with a low in the S&P 500, whereas a conjunction between Venus and Mars has been associated with a high point in the S&P 500. So this is taken into account for the advanced astro indicator. And the advanced astro indicator, if you use all of the weights, it includes all of the weights that you see here. All of the middle terms, the long terms, the north node weights, as well as the declinations. However, if you'd like a more customized version, there are different cuts of the weights. So for example, you can use only some of the weights from the middle terms and exclude everything else. You can look at only the long-term weights. You have different ways of looking at the, uh, the different weights. So over here in this spreadsheet, and you're able to actually download this spreadsheet uh, from the website. So if you go to the, the webpage that says a historical correlation analysis for the advanced astro indicator, if you scroll down right over here, it says uh, see below for a link to download the Excel version. So over here, you can download uh, the Excel version of the correlation analysis to see uh, what the numbers actually look like. And if you decide to download the Excel file, you can actually see in here all of the actual security price data. So if you go to the tab listed uh, labeled uh, security prices, you can see for the 60 securities, um, all the data from January 1st through December 31st of 2015. Uh, you can also see the actual values for the indicators, such as the bradley sedera graph and the three items that combine to make up the bradley sedera graph. Uh, you also, oh, and one thing I'll mention is these three numbers don't add up to the bradley sedera graph. And the reason why is that all the numbers are scaled up to exactly equal 100 so that the graphs look a little bit better. So if you look at these three numbers and you're thinking, hey, these three numbers don't add up to 21, that's the reason why. It's because the numbers are all scaled up so that they look a little bit better when they're graphed. But these three items combined is what gives you the bradley sedera graph. You can also go to the other tabs, which show if you use all of the weights, what the indicator looks like, as well as uh, various subsets of the weights. So we started off by looking at these weights up here. So all of the weights that you see here would be taken into account for the S&P 500 if you took into account all of the weights. So you'll see these indicators on this tab right here where it says full weights. These indicators are based on taking into account all of the weights that were available. However, let's say that you wanted to do no opposites. No opposites basically means that anything that is an opposite weight would be left out. So what is an opposite weight? That would be where you have a positive aspect, such as a sextile or a trine, and the number is negative. So for example, Mercury and Pluto, they have a negative value. They've had a negative value historically uh, when a sextile has taken place. So when a sextile between these two planets has taken place historically, the S&P 500 has tended to be at a low point. So if you remove all of the opposites, that means that if the aspect is historically considered to be positive, which would be a sextile and a trine, you'd leave those weights out. So all of the items in red that are negative here for the sextiles would be removed. Same thing for the trine. And then for the square and opposition aspects, you basically would remove anything that was positive. So the 4.1% would be removed because a square is typically considered to be a difficult or hard aspect, and uh, it's considered to be bad as compared to a trine, which is considered to be good. So that would explain the uh, removing of the opposite weights. Um, this uh, node beyond Saturn, this simply takes into account only the planets um, up to Saturn, but it does not include anything beyond Saturn. So for that, um, Uranus and Pluto, um, it basically would leave that out. Uh, Uranus and Neptune, Neptune and Pluto, uh, things like that it would leave out. So you can basically see there's different cuts of the data that leave out different items. For example, this one leaves out uh, declinations. This one leaves out the north node. So there's various ways that you can cut the data. So at the end of the day, it's nice to uh, 
look at the details some, sometimes, but usually people don't like to get too much into the details and they prefer to start at a high level and think about, okay, well, what's really going on here? Um, what really were the overall results? So if you go to the far left tab, the one that says ranked correlation, this is the one that has what I would consider to be the overall results. So you'll see on the left here, we have a list of all of these securities. And you'll see on the top here, we have a list of all of the weights. So this right here has a ranking of the securities from the highest correlations to the lowest correlations and the indicators that seem to have worked the best as compared to the indicators that seem to have not worked um, quite as well as the ones on the left side. So you'll see here that gasoline futures, they had a very high correlation for the uh, long terms, the Bradley said graph. And this one right here was the one that I thought, thought was the most interesting from the uh, advanced astro weights. So this is the weight that you get if you use the long terms, but you leave out any aspects that are opposites. So for example, if you have a weight that is a, a trine aspect, which is considered to be good, you would basically leave out any aspects that are uh, negative because the trine aspect is considered to be good. And you're only looking at the long terms, which would be aspects between these planets right here. So if you take into account um, the correlation study right here, here's what you'll basically find. If you look at these securities, you can see what was the mean uh, positive amount or negative amount, um, the median and the, po and the percent positive. So mean basically refers to, if you take an average of all of these uh, correlations, what do you get? So each of these values here, it basically is the correlation between this indicator and the security for 2015. If you come over to this tab, this tab actually has the calculations in it. So if you go to the tab that's labeled uh, 2015 correlations, you'll see in here, if you look at a value for one of these cells, so for Amazon, the advanced astro all weights, you see that, that it had a correlation of 25% if you use all of the advanced astro weights. So you can see that it came to this figure by looking at the security price tab to pull the Amazon stock prices. And it also looked at the full weights tab to pull the full weights for Amazon. So those are the individual correlations that we have. And this right here shows the, the mean, the median, and the positive. So overall, you can look at things in one of two ways. You can first look at which indicators are worth looking at, and you can also look to see which securities have had the highest correlations with these indicators. So among the various indicators that are out there, um, here are the ones that perform the best. So the long terms, you can see here just from eyeballing it that they overall had a very um, high correlation with the various securities. If you come down here, you can see that on average, they had a correlation of 35%. And just to verify this, let's highlight the numbers and then we'll go down here and we can see the average was 35%. The median was 50% and of all of these securities, 78% of the securities had a positive correlation. As you go across here, you can see other indicators, how well they performed. So if you think about it, you would expect on average, if the indicator wasn't working correctly, if the indicators were not predictive, you would expect the percent positive and the percent negative to be about the same. So the percent positive, you probably would expect that to be approximately 50%. But if you look at this, you'll see that these values are all uh, above 50%, except for this one, which is exactly equal to 50%. So that tells me that these indicators are worth looking at. And also if you look at the mean and median, so as you might imagine, the correlation between uh, any given indicator and uh, a security, you might expect that number to be uh, positive sometimes and negative sometimes, and pretty rarely it might be equal to exactly zero. So it's interesting to me that if you look at the mean for all of these, it ends up being um, on average 15% for all of them. So if you just highlight all of these correlations for all the securities and all the aspects, you'll see that it's 15%, which means overall the correlation was positive. So that indicates to me that this is worth looking at. Um, same thing with the median results. If you go over here to the values for the individual securities, you can see that for gasoline futures, overall the mean and the median were positive and the percent of total weights were positive. So. Overall, this gives you a sense for the correlations between 
the various securities and the various advanced asteroid indicators. And the Bradley Sedera graph itself in the long terms performed very well. And I would also like to point out that for the advanced asteroid indicator, the long terms and removal of the oppositions, this particular cut of the data also appeared to work very well. So thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video.